Good afternoon, everyone. As Brian said, since its inception three years ago, Unshackle Upstate has been advocating consistently for fundamental change in the way New York State conducts its business and how it has been paying for that by continuously levying new taxes and fees on all state taxpayers, particularly those upstate and the precious jobs and investments we represent. But Albany electeds just don't seem to get it. Indeed, they act as if they're completely disconnected from the real world. What's the result? Since August of last year, New York State has lost more than 176,000 private sector jobs. New York State's state and local tax burden is the second highest in the nation, a dubious distinction that we have held by being either the first or second highest uh, tax paying burden state in the nation for every year for the last 32 years. And in particular, New York State's property taxes are the highest uh, among the nation, 49% higher than the national average. And as some of you know firsthand, Upstate has nine of the 10 highest county property tax rates in the nation as a share of home values. On top of that long-term trend of economic abuse, Albany electeds recently have acted as if what has been called by experts across the globe as the worst recession in our country's history doesn't exist and isn't at all affecting their constituents. Albany electeds over the past six months have taken, undertaken actions which have worsened this already disastrous economy. It started with the state budget, which actually increased by $10.5 billion. How? Primarily by $8 billion, that's B, billion, in new taxes and fees, including nearly a billion dollars in health insurance assessments that we, the taxpayers, will need to pay through higher premiums, and more than a half billion dollars in energy assessments, which we, the taxpayers, uh, will, ha will uh, have drive up our electricity and gas rates. This Albany disconnect especially has impacted us upstate. On the one hand, our economy has been the focus of a lot of supportive political rhetoric from Albany electeds. But on the other, Upstate has been the stark victim of continuous economically adverse inactions and actions from these very same people. And now the problems created by all that have extended across New York State, including, as Brian just mentioned, Long Island. So Unshackle Upstate over the next few weeks will be introducing to our partners, to, our, to citizen taxpayers at large, and especially to those disconnected Albany electeds, a number of our new friends, individuals and organizations from throughout the state who are as mad as hell as we are and who want to band with us to do something about it. And that's why we're all so pleased to stand here today and announce that Tom Golisano has joined the Unshackle Upstate Coalition to significantly help us, including financially, in our advocacy efforts to change Albany once and for all. Welcome, Tom. Now, first of all, I want to laud the efforts of, that's right, appreciate the efforts of Unshackle New York. These people have worked tirelessly in the upstate region to improve our lot economically, the business environment, and also consequently, our personal environments. It hasn't been an easy job for them. I was very glad to work with them on uh, one of the programs that they had reducing the cost of workers' compensation in the state, and they were successful. But what they have announced today, be, not including me, and I don't think that's such a big deal, but what they've included today or what they've announced today is now they have aligned themselves with other chambers of commerce and other organizations, not only in upstate, but downstate. That is a huge, huge statement. It now means this isn't just a small geographic area that's far away from New York City. This is a total state alliance. This is recognition by these populations and these by, by these chambers that we have serious issues going on in this state. I have made a pledge to Sandra and Brian and Andrew that I will help their organization, Unshackle Upstate, as much as I can, whenever I can. 
They're on a noble cause and they should be helped and reinforced in whatever way we can. I'm not gonna repeat what has been said about some of the issues with the state. I will add one thing though. Something historic happened in Albany this week and while everybody's been focused on the drama of the activity, but there's been a little, very, very little focus on the reforms that were passed by the New York State Senate. These four reforms are revolutionary. These reforms are gonna take place. They don't need the governor's signature. They don't need Shelley Silver's signature. We are actually gonna have term limits on the speaker, the majority leader in the New York State Senate. We are really gonna have a C-SPAN. We are gonna have equal apportionment in the Senate for pork barrel monies. There's gonna be equal opportunity for people to present bills on the floor, not just whoever the speaker thinks should be able to present a bill. Committee chairs will have their own ability to hire and fire people and have assets to do real work. These major reforms have been totally missed and understated by the media. When all the dust settles, when all the real or unreal court litigation is over. We must realize these reforms are very, very important. As far as the litigation is concerned, I'll say one thing. I don't understand it. If there was a parliamentary procedure error made on Monday, they'll just have another vote and the same result will occur. So it's a pleasure to be associated with Unshackled New York with Sandy and Brian and Andrew, and we're gonna work very hard to continue this battle. We realize even though a major step was taken earlier this week, it's just the beginning. So, thank you. What, what do you say to people who think you're just trying to buy your way into the room? Buy my way into the room? Well, I would ask first, what do you think my motivation is? Do you think the Paychex wants to do the payroll for New York State? Our largest client has only got 500 employees. We know what, there's nothing in it for me other than the fact I was born and raised here, created a very successful business organization, and I care about the people and the status of the state. And quite frankly, I don't like it that the special interests run this state and the people don't have, don't have very little say in what goes on in this state. That's what, that's what my personal ambition is. So again, if anybody comes to us and says, oh, he's just another special interest himself, you would say, what would you say to them to assure them that you really are here just for real? Well, I haven't asked for a higher pension. I haven't asked for higher salaries. I haven't asked for more time off. I haven't asked for anything. What have I asked for? More democracy, fiscal conservatism, and reform of government. Now, if that's a special interest, I raise my hand. Yes, I'm a special interest. But I want to see those things happen. I think it's important that they happen. Moving so, back to New York State, if you can do this. Since then, my moving back to New York State, I have no plans to do that.